Sorry about that. Someone had to, I had to answer the door for a second. But anyway, so in the books, there's a fake Arya there who's an Im who who's kind of an imposter. So basically, they're just swapping Sancho out for her, which I get that. I mean, it's a way, another way of them streamlining the story. And also, I admit I really didn't care much for the girl who originally went through this. And whereas Sancho is a character where I'm way more invested in, so the writers were like, rather than just introduce a new character, let's take an actress we already work well with and we a lot of people really like and use her instead. The only downside to that is that it kind of takes the focus of the story away. Because in the books, a lot of the Winterfell story is told through Reek's perspective. It's very introspective. It's very much his story. And with Sancha, it's very much take... It's Now it's suddenly becoming more her story. And Reek's just sort of... The, I mean, it's there's still a bit of him, but it's like nothing. I mean, I get it. Reek's very introspective. And we can't really get inside Reek's head the way we can in the books. So we need someone else. And the White Wedding, as I'm going to call it, was really well done. Like, really well done. Like, it was really uncomfortable, but... And I like the, every, the way the sex scene was shot. It was really uncomfortable. Like, you don't... I like how you don't see anything. You just see Reek's reaction. And, again, it sort of applies the philosophy of... What you don't see is more scary than what you do see because the imagination can create anything scary. And it was really well done, and I felt like Reek's reaction sold it. Anyway, not appearing in this episode was Jon Snow, Daenerys, or Brienne. And Brienne's really hasn't anything to do. She's just sort of standing there watching Sansha. And I mean, honestly, it just feels like they just did her her Sansa search story in season four. Because in the books, she doesn't start searching for Sansa until after the events of season four. And the Hound dies, like, in the bar fight. So the book, Feast for Crows, it's a lot of her just wandering around looking for Sansa and has random adventures. They shorten that significantly, and I feel like they just did that so they'd have one less storyline to worry about here. But the downside is now an interesting character really isn't doing much this season. I mean, it's just... I mean, I feel like she's going to come into play in the big Winterfell battle, which is coming, which... I'm curious if that's going to... What episode we're going to do that on. Because, I mean... The, reading the books, I'm trying to map out when they're going to do what, because they change some stuff. Like, in season four, like, the... What's her... When... Littlefinger pushes the woman out of down the hole through the moon door. That's the last chapter of the book. I mean, it's not the last chapter. There's an epilogue where something happens, which I won't give away because it hasn't happened in the show and it could still happen. But that's the end of it. But the show, they changed everything around for the time, for the sake of pacing and for the sake of who we're invested in. But yeah. But I do like how everything's converging on Winterfell. It makes it more focused and... Whereas Dance of Dragons, you had a, in the book, you had a, like everything sort of converged, but was focused around. It was focused around Daenerys. Everything here just they're do they're connect. They seem to be connecting everything, and that is something that's really hard to do, especially with Martin's story and how he's diverging everything. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog, and I'll see you next week. So, and, so leave your thoughts in the comments below. And this is Jstar60 signing out.